Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to go through file read, file read line and loop read commands in order to read contents from different files. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. So let's get started. So I'm going to get started with file read first. File read is something that I've extensively have shown you in my previous video. So uh, there's nothing so much new about it. I'm just going to show you maybe some more other interesting things that you might find interesting. So file read basics is you have the output variable, which is going to have the content read from this file stored into and error level is going to be set to zero if you have successfully read the file and you can display the output variable in a message box like that or you can get an error level which returns one if the file does not exist so this file will not exist when my test is out so let's go ahead and create a new text document and put in some value called say hello and then run this and see what we get so with my first message box i'll get an error level of zero because it has successfully read the value inside the new newly created text file and the next one is going to return a value of one because this file does not exist you can also read from a auto hockey script for example so this script that you're looking at right here is right here i can read from it and show the value inside it by uh, running a message box like that so i get exactly the codes inside this auto hockey script you can also uh, read from csv files as well so i've got a code that creates a csv file and adds one two three four five six and seven eight nine inside the first row second row third row in different columns so if i go ahead and run this i will see that new csv file being created if i open it up then i will have the data laid out like that and let me just get rid of that now now that i have the file created so i'm going to use the file read command to read that csv file and see what we get in the output variable and that's exactly what we get in the output variable the data that we have entered in now I'm going to show you how you can store um, data in your clipboard into a file. So I have demonstrated this in a previous script that I have written to create and use multiple clipboards. But I'll just quickly show you here as well. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to say I'm going to use snipping tool to take a screenshot of this little folder here and make sure that I have that that image right here is saved into my clipboard by pasting it into paint so I do have that saved into my clipboard so let me just go ahead and delete this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this file append command to store this clipboard data into a file called clipboard data you don't need the extension if I run this then I will get that file and the size of this file is, as you can see, uh, 807 kilobytes. Once that's done, I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to read from this clipboard data file and then store that back into the clipboard. And because right now I have still the same uh, snipping inside my clipboard, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the snipping tool again and take a screenshot of this uh, white blank space. Right, and then get out and if I do a paste here then I'll see just the white blank space and I know that the clipboard has been updated uh, to something new and so if I run this what it's going to do is it's going to do the file read and then you use that option in order to read binary data or clipboard data which is going to be this file here so that file and store that into my clipboard data and that gets assigned into my clipboard so if I go ahead and run it what I'm going to get when I bring my paint back and do a paste is the data that I have output into a backup as a file in this manner. Okay. Um, if, say, for example, your file size is too large, so it's, if it's greater than one gigabyte, AutoHockey is going to set the error level to number one. 
And so you're going to need the M option. There are some options available in the file read command. Check it out from the AutoHotKey documentation. And so you're going to, going to have to use the start M in order to read just the first bit. You can use the file get size command to check the file size before you load the file if the file size is expected to be too big. Or you can use file open in case of large files. Uh, because that does not read the entire file into memory. File open is something I'm going to go through in my next video. It's uh, related to file object. Now, if you want to be able to read a non-English data, so for example, uh, where am I? Here. So let me just convert this into Korean. Hello. Um, and then if I just try to read that and output it, then I'm going to get gibberish, not the Korean language. And so you have to use file encoding to change the file encoding to UTF-8, in which case you're going to see the foreign language correctly. So you, when you use the file encoding command, what this is going to affect is, it's going to affect all of this. So it's going to affect file read, file read line, loop read which I'm going to cover in today's video. File append, you know. File open is, is something I'm going to cover in my next video. All right, there are a few other encoding types like UTF-8, UTF-8 raw, or UTF-16, which I'm not going to go into. All right, next up, I'm going to go into the file read line command, which is to read a specific line from a file. So instead of uh, reading the entire file content, I'm just going to read, say for example, the third line from the CSV file that I've created. And the third line we have 789. And therefore, if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to see 789. If I change this to 1, then I'm going to read the first line, which is going to be 1, 2, 3. Change it to 2, then it's going to be 4, 5, 6. And you can read all of the lines one by one by doing a loop. There are other methods to read through the file contents line by line, but um, this is another method. So if I go ahead and run this, it's going to run and look at, run the loop and look at the first line and then read out the content, continue, 456, continue, 789, so on and so forth. All right, so that's uh, file read line and let us get into file loop read. And loop read is basically similar to file read line but the difference is it performs better than file read line because one the file is kept open for the entire operation so with the file read line when you do a loop it will open up the file and read the first line and then close it and then open up the file again to read the second line close it again open it up again to read the third line and close it again and so on and so forth in which case you would rather want to use loop read which is going to keep the file open until the entire loop ends. So the file does not need to be scanned each time. Obviously, if you want to load an entire file content into a variable, you just use the file read command instead of using a loop. And to open multiple files simultaneously, use file open, which is file object, which I'm going to cover in my next video. So yes, yeah, so let's get into loop read. And how you use the loop read command is in this manner. So you just go loop read. I don't have any curly braces here because I'm just doing a, a single line loop. And uh, let me open this up and add a bit more text. So my hello there, good I. And what this is going to do when I run it, it's going to read the lines one by one like that. And then I'll put that into a loop read line variable. And this is equivalent to file read line in a loop, but this is going to be slower because you are uh, opening up the file and closing it every time you read a single line from the file. Obviously, to human eye, if you're dealing with a small file, then it's not going to make too much difference. But if you're dealing with a large size file, then you might want to uh, use the loop read instead. Now, if you want to get the last line from a text file, so this text file, for example, you've got by right here, right? And if you want to get the by only, 
then you just do a loop read and you read it until the end and then store that into last line. So this is going to do a few iterations. One, two, three, four, and then it's going to stop there. And then the last line is going to have by inside it. So that's how you read the last line. And there is an optional parameter, which is the last one here. So loop read that is mandatory. And then that one is to create a new file and append uh, the data from the original file into the new file. So let me go ahead and on that. So what we're getting is the current line reads hello. Hello here. It, it's asking me to add whether if I want to add it to a new file, the new file is that. So file append command is going to kick in and then create that new file and then add that file. It's being used by another process, which is the script. So let me just finish this first and then go ahead and open it later. So current line reads there, add to new file. No, nope. current line reads good, add to new file. Yes, current line reads by, add to new file. Yes. And so if I open this up, then I'm just going to get the three words that I decided to add into the new file. So that's the that's basically the path of the file that you want to create and copy the data from or to copy the data to. Right. So second, lastly, I've got loop pass with loop read. So what this is going to do is when you have multiple lines of data like this, and within each line, you have a separator like that. So it's kind of like CSV. So you've got line break and columns. In this case, I'm just going to use column as a replacement for the comma in CSV. So let's just assume that you have a data in this manner, in this format. What I'm going to do is um, probably not going to do this because file delete deletes the file and I don't have that temp text file. And then append this text, this data inside a temp text file. And then we're going to go into a loop in order to uh, read out the data right, from this temp text. So I'm going to be using loop read and then read the text. And then I'm going to go into another loop right here. Right. So initially the I is going to be zero when the loop, the mother loop or the parent loop starts, it's going to add one to I and then it's going to go into the child loop. And the child loop is going to be doing a loop pass and it's going to pass the a loop read line, which is the variable that is uh, used by this parent loop. And then I'm going to pass this loop line uh, by the column. So this column here and then display message box that says build number a index, which pertains to this child loop. So in the first iteration, it's going to be one. In line i, i is the a index basically for this parent loop, which is represented by uh, the variable i here. So we're going to get number one here as well in the i in the first iteration of this loop. And then a loop field is the a loop field of this loop path. So if I go ahead and run this, what's going to happen is we're going to get the field number one a index is in line one the variable i and the first name is this first name right here and then if i press ok then it's going to pass it by the column and it's going to show us peter next peter right field number two in line one is peter now if I press ok then this loop finishes and it's going to go into the next iteration of the parent loop and it's going to add one to i and therefore our line number is going to change to two so if i press ok Field number is going to be one because it's the first iteration of the child loop. And then line is two is last name. If I press OK, I'm going to get Piper because that's the last value here. And that ends the loop. So that's kind of like the CSV that I have created. So I'm just going to do the CSV loop as well. So this CSV file where you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. And if we go ahead and run this. Basically, going to get the same or similar thing. So field one dash one, which represents cell one comma one. So first cell, first row is going to be one. And then first row, second column is going to be two. 
first row, third column, it's going to be 3. Second row, first column is 4. Second row, second column is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? So this is it for today's video. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go through the file object to use its methods and properties. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.